In this video, I'll show you how to create a frequency histogram. A frequency histogram is a bar chart showing the frequency of occurrence of each class. The width of each bar is equal to the class width, and the height of each bar is equal to the frequency. The horizontal axis can show the class limits, the class midpoints, or both. In our example, I'll show you both. The vertical axis can show the absolute frequency, the relative frequency, or both, and in our case, we'll show both. We're expected to use the following table, which we derived from one of our previous videos, where we analyzed grades of 30 students and created these classes, and place that information as a frequency histogram. To do this effectively, we have to look at our class limits, and we have how many classes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The class here is between 56 and 62. The class here is between 62 and 68 and so forth. And we'll write this down underneath here in the horizontal axis. So we'll have 56 to 62, 68 to 74, 80, 86, 92, and 98. And we'll label this student grades. Along the vertical axis, we can place both the absolute frequency, as suggested in the description above, and the relative frequency. So I'll dedicate the left side to the absolute frequency and the right side to the relative frequency. So let's write down absolute frequency and over here the relative. Now to create the correct intervals along the vertical, we have to look at the absolute frequency for each of these classes. Notice that it ranges from 2 all the way to 7. So make sure that you have enough lines along the vertical to fit that. We'll call this 2, 4, 6, and 8. Within the 56 to 62 class, we had a total of 2. To illustrate that, I'll make a bar that reaches to 2. And the difference between a histogram and a bar graph is that a bar graph, you have a separation between the classes. Whereas in a histogram, as far as I know, there is no separation. So just keep that in mind for future reference. Between 62 and 68, we also had 2. And after that, we had 4. So this will reach up to 2. And between 68 and 74, it went up to 4. Furthermore, between 74 and 80, there was a total of 7. So this will reach up to 7. Between 80 and 86, we also had 7. Between 86 and 92, we had 6. And finally, in the last class, we had 2 between 92 and 98. Good for them. Now, I also mentioned in the description above that we will show the midpoints. The midpoint between 56 and 62 was 59. So you can write down 59 right here. Between these two, it was 65. In between these, 71, 77, 83, 89, and 95. And we discussed how to find the midpoints. You simply add the two numbers up and divide by two in case you forgot. Now, to show the relative frequency on the same vertical, this can get a little bit tricky because you're working on two different ends trying to manage two different scales. The best way to come up with a proper scale for the relative frequency is to start with the greatest class value. Our greatest value belonged in these two classes, 74 all the way to 86. And around that range, we had, if you look at the chart, 24% approximately that. So at this point right here, it should be 23.3. But we need a proper scale. We can't just say 23 here and come up with a scale that fits that. So we'll say that up until this point is 25, and every second bar midway is 5. So that's 5, that's 10, that's 15, that's 20, and that fits perfectly. So this is a percentage. So there you have it. That is how to create a frequency histogram from a frequency distribution table.